By late summer 1786, the Annapolis Convention had failed to produce at least the beginning of reform of the Articles of Confederation. Shays Rebellion had raised more fears that the Articles did not provide the Confederation Congress with adequate powers to govern a union of states. The present system neither has nor deserves advocates, and if some very strong props are not applied, will quickly tumble to the ground. No money is paid into the public treasury, no respect is paid to the federal authority. Not a single state complies with the requisitions. Several pass them over in silence, and some positively reject them. It is not possible that a government can last long under these circumstances. James Madison to Edmund Pendleton, February 24, 1787 James Madison was just one man who was looking for answers. He thought the experience of events, like a Shays' Rebellion, would be a persuasive enough argument to reform the Articles. But he went looking for more answers and turned to history. He studied ancient and modern confederated governments, examining their deficiencies to determine how to correct them, and used that to shape a stable future for the United States. He was unable to use this research at Annapolis. It seemed promising in the early months of 1787 that he would be able to use it in May as more states appointed commissioners for the convention in Philadelphia. What may be the result of this political experiment cannot be foreseen. The difficulties which present themselves are on one side almost sufficient to dismay the most sanguine, whilst on the other side the most timid are compelled to encounter them by the mortal diseases of the existing Constitution. James Madison to Thomas Jefferson, March 19, 1787. I am glad to find that Congress have recommended to the states to appear in the convention proposed to be holden in Philadelphia in May. I think the reasons in favor have the preponderancy of those against the measure. It is idle in my opinion to suppose that the sovereign can be insensible of the inadequacy of the powers under which it acts, and that seeing it should not recommend a revision of the federal system, when it is considered by many as the only constitutional mode by which the defects can be remedied. George Washington to James Madison, March 31, 1787. Washington's endorsement of strengthening the federal government and his approval of the convention encouraged Madison. Soon after receiving Washington's letter, he began writing a report in April 1787 about the confederation he knew better than any other, which he titled Vices of the Political System of the United States. It compiled all of the familiar criticism of the confederation from the previous six years, and it laid the blame for its deficiencies squarely on the poor administration of the state governments. But from this negative assessment, Madison created something positive. He wrote to Jefferson, Washington, and Edmund Randolph and explained his ideas for reforming the government. This became the basis for the proposal the Virginia delegation would introduce at the federal convention. Madison believed that the government should have complete authority in all matters that required uniformity, like trade, which the Confederation had been trying to achieve for years. He thought the federal government should have veto power over state legislation that threatened minority rights, especially when it came to issuing paper money. He preferred a bicameral legislature with representation based on population in both houses, so small states would no longer have authority equal to that of large states. Madison believed that both the legislative and judicial branches should have supreme authority, but he was unsure of going that far with the executive branch. His early thoughts were that it could control the militia, and perhaps that would be enough. Most important of all, Madison rejected the established protocol for approving amendments to the Articles of Confederation. He insisted that the changes proposed by the convention be consented to by the people themselves in ratifying conventions, not by the legislatures of the states. This would truly make the new system of government national, not just federal. Time was running out, and the states could no longer stand in the way of reforming the Articles, or else the Confederation might remain on a path to an uncertain and tumultuous future. It is already seen by many, and must by degrees be seen by all, that unless the Union be organized efficiently and on Republican principles, 
innovations of a much more objectionable form may be obtruded, or in the most favorable event, the partition of the empire into rival and hostile confederacies will ensue. James Madison to Edmund Randolph, April 8, 1787. 